Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we're on to the next section of the video. It's going to be about steel underpinning. Uh, we're moving further along down that paradigm of foundation repairs. If you're curious about the paradigm, look at one of the other videos where I talk about it. Again, all of this is going to be in detail later on um, or available on PowerPoint with like pictures and videos and all that fun stuff. So. Uh, I understand that these videos, I'm just talking a lot and burning through it so that you guys can take all the information in quick, concise, easy uh, to help you understand. Once again, I'm available questions, comments, concerns. You can just DM me, leave a message or anything like that. So steel underpinning. Um, we talked about how 95% of all foundation movement problems have to deal with the soil below the foundation, not the foundation itself, right? And we talked about treating the soil using compaction grouting. Um, and there's other methods that we can do to, to treat the foundation itself. But um, if you're not gonna treat the soil specifically, so we're gonna take that awesome drawing of a house because I can draw totally, right? And then you've got dirt here, right? And then we've got that footing that we talked about building. Meh. Footing. So all steel underpinning is is attaching a metal bracket, and we'll zoom this up over here, all right? So you've got a big, big, big footing. Boom, like so, right? Or whatever. <laughs> uh, so you've got a big footing here, and the house sits on top, right? Um, if the soil below this area is bad, that creates the downward movement, right? That's, that, that's where the failure occurs. This could be any one of the symptoms or, or sorry, uh, um, reasons for settlement that we talked about. If you're curious about any of it, look at the causes for settlement video. That's why I see they all intertwine, it's good. Anyway, uh, so the cool part about the steel underpinning systems is they accomplish one of two things. It's either taking soil out of the equation or it is tying directly into the soil using uh, mechanical means of lifting and stabilizing the structure, which means we're not going to treat the soil down here and hope that it lifts this up. What we do is they'll actually chip out, they'll actually break the footing of the home a little bit, and then they'll put a steel bracket on the underside of it. Now, depending on the underpinning system that you're using, they're either going to hydraulically drive some thin walled uh, hollow steel tubing straight down. Okay, uh, or I'm gonna go to the other side, bop, and we'll do our uh, map, map, house goes up. They're gonna cut that off. Boop, same system. They're gonna put a steel plate here. That plate supports the underside of the home, and then instead of pushing it straight down, what they'll do is they'll drive these in, and then there's these little like blades these blades that screw into the soil and tie it in, okay? Now, this is called a series of things, okay? We're gonna call them helical piers to keep on it. Yes, it can be called a billion other things. Helical piles, screw piles, screw piers, helical jack, it, lots of things, okay? Same thing here, push piers. Um, we call them push piers, let's stand there. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both systems. Um, times where you would use helical piers versus push piers, okay? But this is an overall really good system because if you've got a house over here, and it's got a failure, let's say 25 feet deep, right? If it's got a failure 25 feet deep down here in the soil, what you can do with these push piers is basically push the pier all the way below that weak soil zone and the idea is it pushes down until the strength of the soil is stronger than the weight of the home, right? So if the home is stronger than the soil, it sinks. Makes sense, right? So what you do is you push the piers down until the soil becomes stronger than the home, and then if you keep pushing down, it creates an opposite force and creates upward push, right? So that'll actually lift the house back up. This is, uh, well, we'll get into the risk view benefits in a little bit. Uh, the other idea is to have a soils engineer, 100% uh, necessary, to have a soils engineer to come out and design these screw piles or these helical piers. They design it based off of the existing soils conditions, okay? 
So what I can do right now is give you a blanket statement that some single story, um, slab on grade wood frame and stucco structure with an asphalt A-frame roof can probably use, I don't know, a 15 foot depth of installation with uh, eight, 10 size blades with what, two inch shaft on it and it needs to be torqued up to 2,500 PS. Like, I'm guessing, right? This is all a guess. Until you find out exactly what those soils parameters are, you shouldn't know what the design of the helical piles are. So be wary of contractors who come out and say, this is going to be your design. I mean, if they're willing to put their money behind it, cool. But other than that, they shouldn't be making that statement. That is an engineer statement to be making. Now there's a lot of guys out there who've been doing, been doing helical piers forever. Okay. AB Chance, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, helical pile, uh, not just contractor, but manufacturer. It's a great product. Most of their installation teams have been certified. Uh, same thing as McLean Dixie, uh, great, 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 great product. Uh, and they train all of their installers so that they're certified to do it. They've been doing it for a really, really long time. So you can be comfortable with somebody like that who throws out these blanket parameters and designs. Just understand that until the engineer stamps and signs off on it, there could be changes made to the design of the piers. Maybe instead of two blades, there's three. Instead of two inch shaft, there's three inch shaft. Like it's all making the price more expensive, right? So just be aware about those changes that could happen. Um, so that's basically it on this. I'm going to hit up on a different thing in a second. Um, there's two more videos I got to make about steel underpinning. We're going to talk about risk be reward, and I got to talk about design for you guys a little bit uh, in just a second. But the big takeaways here for steel underpinning specifically is going to be a bracket that attaches to the footing. Then you can either push uh, hydraulically steel tubes down to competent strata, or you can screw steel into the ground. And, uh, and make it all work out well that way. Uh, the importance, no, that's later. <laughs> so I guess I got three videos to make. Um, that's it for this one. Super short, easy. I think more videos are supposed to be like this. Uh, so hit me up if you have any questions, comments, concerns, down below, private message, whatever, like, comment, subscribe. I'm supposed to say that on every video. Thank you guys, have a good one.